stories you've heard, they don't tell the whole truth. The island is indeed the place of legend. There's power and vast riches as well. But those who've gone before you have simply vanished, never heard from again. I saw the horror, the madness that overcame the crew. It was beyond any evil the world has ever known. How I survived, I do not know. The contents of this box are not of this world. They will guide you to that one, wherever and whatever that may be. Go then, Captain. Charge your course and your fate. I will say a prayer for the souls of your crew. Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome to a game called New World. If you're not familiar with New World, it is a brand new MMORPG experience created by the Amazon Game Studios. It's a dark fantasy setting that seems to take place in our own world, or maybe in an alternate version of reality, on the mysterious island of Aeternum. I've been excited for this game for a very long time. I love MMORPGs, they're probably my favorite genre. And I've tried to avoid spoiling anything in the actual game for myself as much as possible. So basically everything is going to be brand new to me. And I'm hoping that we'll get to enjoy this immersive experience together. This is the open beta, not full release. Full release happens at the end of August. For now, my plan is for us to see as much of the game as possible. This series is going to be in the format of a let's play. And what I enjoy about games is the story and the lore getting into the setting, and really just trying to get immersed into the game world. So I'm going to be letting all the voice acted scenes play out, and I'll be reading any side quests as well as any lore objects that we come across while playing. I'll explain the systems as I learn them, read out all the skills and abilities, things like that. So, with that being said, let's take a look at some of the things in the character creator here. Let's start with body types. So just basic male and female body types. Let's go through the face options. I'll go through these pretty quickly so you guys can kind of see everything that you have access to. You can pause if you want to take a closer look. But I'll just kind of quickly go through these. And what do we got for skin tones? Again, this is the first time that I'm seeing any of this. I love the plethora of beard options. I think that's really cool. Lots of different facial hair. All the different eye colors. What are features? Okay, so things like freckles, maybe birthmarks. Some different kinds of skin coloration. We have scars. And different tattoos. Very cool.
I feel like we could probably spend like a very long time in the character creator and it's probably something I'll spend more time with once the game is live and we have the characters that we're gonna have to live with and enjoy for hundreds of hours. But let's kind of settle on something here. I think I'm gonna play as a female character just because they tend to do a better job of the animations for female characters. Don't know why, but it always tends to be the case that the female characters tend to be a little bit more well done. Let's see what we have for hairstyles. I love that we can <laughs> do some of the hairstyles uh, like this. You can literally make your character look as unique as you want. We'll say that. I'm digging the short hair. We might come back to that one. Although that's pretty cool too. Alright, let's go with the short hair for now. Lots of different hairstyles. I, I love that we have access to all these different uh, hairstyles and hair colors. I love that we not only have realistic hair colors, uh, but that we can go so far as to do like blues and purples and stuff like that. Uh, I think that's really awesome. Let's do something like this. All right, how about we do something like that, and then we can just get right into things here. Uh, X to draw your weapon, okay? Alright, so we've got block, light attack, heavy attack, we've got a dodge. Captain Alduis Thorpe. He does not look to be doing well. You! Come closer. Your captain needs you. There's something wrong. I'm not feeling right. That devil storm. What in the nine hells was that about? And where is my box? I need my box. Did you take it? You build rat. All right, I guess we weren't really an important crew member on this voyage. I really love that there's voice acting in this. It It's so great to have at least the main quest voice acted. It's going to get so many more people involved in the lore and the story than just having to read walls of text on your own. Something isn't right. To come so close. It's not fair. What, what's happening to me? I can't die. Not like this. All right, well, we can't help him, but we can recover his items. Round shield, light ration. Tab will get us into the inventory. Let's go ahead and equip our shield. And we're putting rations into our quick consumable slots. Okay, so no, three and four will access those. Recover 40 health per second for 20 seconds. This recovery stops if damage is taken. Afterwards, recover 1% of your health every 2.5 seconds for 20 minutes. Seems like something we should probably eat immediately. Okay. 
and we'll get the well-fed buff and get that passive regen going. We don't seem to have a, a mini-map of any kind right now. Maybe that's just for this opening area. I don't know how much we need to look around or what there is going to be to find. I'm going to try to explore as much as possible. And we can see our food buff above our health bar at the center bottom there. They really want us to jump a lot, apparently. So we seem to have a, a three swing combo that culminates in that spin. One, two, three. Alright, that's cool. We can put our shield up. <laughs> very cool, very cool. I love the more action-oriented combat. We're still locked onto the target. And it's not tab targeting. I wonder I wonder how we switch targets. Now look at this stuff going on over here, all the corruption. So maybe there is no target lock on. Maybe it's all based on the the reticle. I want to turn the volume up a little bit. Movie volume is all the way up. And you guys let me know if we need to adjust any of the sound settings. I really want it to be immersive. I feel like we're going to want to hear the ambient sounds, the vocals, and the music the most. Some of the sound effects we can probably keep a little bit lower. UI volume can be down a little bit. And yeah, you guys let me know if anything needs to be adjusted and we'll get that squared away. Just exploring all these nooks and crannies. I, I don't know if they're going to hide any loot over here, but I wouldn't really want to miss anything in the opening area. What do we have here? Space and W. Oh, that's cool. Sword and Shield Mastery 2. Press K to purchase upgrades. So, as we use our weapons, they level up. That's kind of reminiscent of Elder Scrolls games. This game's system kind of reminds me of Elder Scrolls Online, and I really liked their combat and class system quite a bit. I know not everyone was a fan of it. Let's see, right now we have a sword and shield equipped. A pairing of melee-focused weapons that, when combined, offer solid offensive and defensive capabilities. Utilizes a combination of arcing swings and lunges for the offensive melee attacks and a shield to maximize defenses. Light attack deals 100% slash damage. Light ender deals 105% slash damage. Heavy attack deals 120% thrust. So there's different kinds of damage. Slash and thrust is what we have on this weapon. Uh, and then there's a bunch of other weapons. Rapier, hatchet for one-handed. Two-handed we have spear, great axe, and war hammer. Ranged weapons we have bow and musket. And then magic we have fire staff, life staff, and ice gauntlets. Very cool. Choose an ability. You have one unspent mastery point. So we have two trees here under the sword and shield talent tree. We have sword master and defender. We could take whirling blade, deal 145% weapon damage to all foes within two meters, or defender, 
rush forward 5 meters, knocking back foes, and dealing 125% weapon damage. Let's take a look at the other actives. So I'm assuming the square abilities are actives, whereas the circles are going to be passives. In the Swordmaster tree, we can also get Leaping Strike. Leap 4 meters, deal 135% weapon damage. And we do Reverse Stab, a stab attack that deals 175 weapon damage. In the Defender tree, we can get Shield Bash. Stuns foes in front of you. It also acts as a taunt, or it's taunt gem compatible. If you have a Carnelian gem equipped in your sword, this ability causes a 6 second taunt to all enemies hit. And then Defiant Stance. Same thing here, Taunt Gem Compatible. So you need a Carnelian Gem equipped in the weapon to activate the Taunt abilities. That's interesting. I think right now we're going to go with damage. Let's go with Whirling Blade. And that's going to assign it to Q. Oh, very cool. I, I was kind of thinking that we would do for this character a, a tank character because I think that's going to, uh, it's going to let us, oh, auto run, okay. It's going to let us get into groups for dungeon content and stuff a lot easier, possibly, so. But I am going to experiment with a variety of weapons. I'm also planning to put out individual videos to cover different weapon types uh, outside of this series, so yeah. If you're looking for more New World content beyond Let's Plays, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. There will be much more to come. Oh, nice. Very nice title drop. Look at that. Descend into the grotto to investigate the smoke. Yeah, that doesn't look as pretty down there. Something tells me we should enjoy our last moments of looking at this beautiful landscape because we are about to descend into what looks like madness. I love how our character's walking animation changes a little bit as we walk downhill. That's really cool. What is this? Nothing we can interact with. Oh boy, boss fight. Now, I know the island's secret. Now, I know true power. I'm not, not sure what he did or what he did to us there, but it didn't seem like a great thing. He was glowing red, we were glowing blue. I wonder what the significance of that is. He's obviously full of some kind of corruption. Maybe he was trying to corrupt us and some kind of energy protected us and that's why we were blue? Suppose that eventually we'll find out. Alright, we've started in an area... What is this area called? I can't quite read it. Something bluffs. <laughs> Some of these icons kind of block the actual name of the area. 
And what one thing I do know is that I think the area that you drop off in is is randomized a little bit. When you start, I think we can start in one of four areas. Uh, we'll work on things here, but we may actually eventually go down to these other areas down here. I think you have a chance of starting in Windsward, First Light, Cutlass Keys. Is this M Monarch's Bluff? It must be Monarch's. Investigate the Watchtower. Let's see if we can get to the quest giver here. Another survivor. <laughs> Saints be praised. It's always good to find a live one. That storm was fierce. Figured it would drown the lot of you. Who are you? Me? Oh, I'm Charity. Uh, Watcher Douglas. The Monarch's Bluff Settlement. And who do I have the pleasure of meeting today? Well, I know this isn't the best way to make an acquaintance, but it's actually the way most people arrive here. I suppose you're still wondering where here is. Okay, we got some duelist boots. On the Isle of Eternum. It's hard for me to even remember the old world these days, but I know it was very different. On the good side, we generally don't ever age or die here. Oh. At least, not in any natural way. On the bad side, there's what happened with the rest of your crew. No one ages or dies here. Hmm. Well, see, they came back to life, but without their souls. They're wandering around the beach all aimless-like. The kind thing is to at least try and put them down for good. Would you mind? Uh, we could definitely do that, so we're gonna be killing Drowned. Defeat the Drowned wandering around the shipwreck on the beach and then return to Watcher Douglas at the Monarch's Bluff Watchtower. Alright, let's get into our character here. Okay, we have some points to spend. Now, the stats that we want... Oh, I'm so glad it shows this. It shows you what weapons benefit from from which stats. And from what I understand, weapons have a primary and secondary stat that they benefit from. For instance, the sword scales primarily with strength, but also with dexterity. And yeah, I think it's going to be good for us to start putting some points immediately into strength. So let's do that. As we hit these milestones, we get some bonuses here. So the first milestone, after we put 50 points into strength, we get plus 5% damage to melee weapon light attacks and plus 10% mining speed. And every, every stat seems to have different bonuses as you go along. It might have been good to put a point into health. Yeah, constitution. Yeah, it's going to affect our health. Okay. I'm good with that. And again, guys, all of this is new to me, so I, I like to kind of explore systems on my own. Haven't done a ton of research on anything, so I'll just kind of be trying to figure things out as we go and talking through things. But I always welcome feedback. If you guys are more well-versed, if you're also playing the game, let me know what you think. Lots of trade skills, and from what I understand, you can do all the trade skills. You're not locked into certain professions the way you are in games like World of Warcraft. Uh, what I wanted to do was get into my actual character sheet. To see where we would equip... Where would we equip new items? Well, for now, let's let's move out here and get down towards the beach so we can get away from all the people. There we go, that's a little bit smoother. Oh, there's our bio. We have no title, and the company, from what I understand, is like your guild. Apparently, we can respec at any time. I think this is gated after a certain level. We won't explore that too much today.
Do we have the ability? Oh yeah, we can put waypoints down. Very cool, very cool. I like that a lot. All right, I would love to equip these boots that we got, but uh, in all honesty here, can't find our character sheet. Ah, uh, that's right. It was the tab key. <laughs> that's why I didn't think of it. It's really weird to me that the tab key gets us into our character sheet. Obviously, coming from like most MMOs, I'm really used to tab being our target. There we go. We got some interesting looking boots. 100 gear score, 9.8 armor rating elemental, and 9.8 armor rating physical. Landmark charted. Seems like we got some experience points for uncovering this area. And I think we can share experience with anybody who also hits an enemy, so we don't- they're not tapped. The way you might find in a game like WoW Classic, where I think we share them. I'd like to be able to time that thrust. Ooh, this guy is bugged out. I think I want to turn my sensitivity up a little bit. Camera sensitivity, let's just change that to 40. That's much better. And I think this is indicating the radius of which we will find the enemies for the quest. So we can go quite a ways. Standing rank increased. Newcomer. Level 3. We're getting lots of pings and things that are happening that seem to be good for us, but that aren't fully explained. Capilli's Coronation, Monarch's Bluff Watchtower, The Rise of Poseidon. Oh, so these are like smaller individual areas with recommended levels on them within the zone itself. Very cool. And it does seem like we're going to be getting attribute points quite often. Uh, right now we're actually leveling quite quickly. Let's do strength and con again. It's pinging us for something on the map. Buy territory reward. You have one unspent territory standing point. Earn 5% more territory standing while well, then Monarch's Bluff. Earn 3% more XP. I think this is obvious. Let's take the XP gains. Okay. We, we've, we've completed the quest. We only needed to kill three drowned. Let's head back to the watchtower. didn't enjoy that but once their souls are gone it's the most you can do for them i wish i could say you eventually get used to it but you don't not really oh dear where are your manners charity i'm sorry after everything you've been through today you're probably starving aren't you oh, i didn't think to bring anything but i can show you how to make do get some flint and wood then make yourself a skinning knife at the fire. That's a start, at least. Alright, it looks like they're going to tutorialize us a little bit on some of the professions. 
Gather flint and wood nearby, then interact with the Watcher's campfire to craft a flint skinning knife, then talk to Watcher Douglas. Flint from the ground, green wood from a bush, and then come back. Okay, assuming we can do this, like, right in this area. And then we need flint from the ground. Let's look over here towards these rocky outcroppings. Oh, okay. Well, flint looks like that. Just grab everything that's here. Life's not going to make itself. Oh, we actually have to craft it. Let's see. At the campfire. That's a supply cache. I wonder if we should craft some of this other stuff as well. Let's craft a logging axe. And let's do a mining pick. Got your skinning knife, eh? It's not exactly pretty, but it'll do the job. I mean, all right. Now that you've got your little knife, you can rustle up a meal. There's lots of boar about. Hunt one down, skin it, roast the meat on the fire, and that should tide you over. Pick yourself a fat one if you can. This is actually a good hunting spot. With all these people around, I'm surprised we haven't completely decimated the boar population. That's interesting. It looks like we've kind of gone outside of the area. Here we go. It's a little bit of a lengthy gathering process. I wonder if it gets better as you get better tools. So we got pork and we got rawhide. like a warm meal by the fire. I bet you're glad you took the time. I hope it doesn't seem like life is just a misery here. 
Some people quite like it. And the weather here in Monarch's Bluffs is nice. Most of the time. Not most of the time. And most of us don't even age. It's something to do with the blue Azoth. It's just not always predictable. Some age, some don't, some die, some don't, and then some come back as corrupted or lost. That seems a little random, but maybe we'll learn more about why those things happen. So the blue Azoth, that must have been part of the energy that protected us from being corrupted in, in the beginning? I'm afraid so. That was a freak storm that wrecked your ship. All these ships. I mean, it's corruption that causes storms off the coast all the time. That was the worst I've ever seen. What is the corruption? It's that nasty red stuff, kind of... an evil magic. Being corrupted is even worse than being lost. The corruption forms a ring around a turner and smashes any ships approaching. And... Is there any way to fight it? Storms are just a fact of life here. The best we can do is keep records of all the ships corruption claims. In fact, if you could scrub these ships for any keepsakes, the settlement will want them. Search for survivors and bring back any records or remnant items from the shipwrecks. Watch for signs of corruption as well, then return to Watcher Douglas at Monarch's Bluff. Uh, let's take a look at our gear. I know we got some pants. And we got a shirt. That is better. Okay. I wonder how we quickly switch our... Okay, here we go. Let's... Let's do that. That way we should be able to chop down any trees we come up against. Let's put that down here so we can mine any of the bigger stones that we need to. I wonder if there's a way to turn off the scrolling global chat. Let's take a look at a couple of things. Settings. Communications. Let's turn the size down a little bit. That could help. We have an update to the quest, collect the ship's roster, collect the ship's manifest, collect the ship's log. And they are all, are all in slightly different locations. Day 13, mutiny is upon us. Boatswain Arona has gotten it into everyone's heads that the ship would be better run by him and the whispers of dissent have grown to a dull roar below decks. I will have to reinstate my authority by any means necessary if we are to reach our destination in time. Two more attribute points. We got Straight Sword Mastery 2. This is the roster of everyone on the ship.
Okay, so it looks like we unlock our second weapon slot at level 5. And here is the things they had in stores. Three crates of bullion, hardtack rations, two reels of parchment, 13 hatches, 15 bows, five crates of arrows. Search the shipwreck for records uh, and remnants. So, I like how it's kind of an evol evolving quest where we do a few things and it kind of chains into the next thing we need to do. Let's get a good look at these guys. Pretty gruesome. We keep getting a ping for camping being available. We will eventually check that out. Search the ship's locker. Flint arrows and iron cartridges, so the ranged weapons in this game do require ammo. Here's the ship's locker. We got a spear. And sand flux. We got a plate helm out of that. And so there's there's light armor, medium armor, and heavy armor from what I understand. And as you can kind of tell, you're not restricted in your build. So you could be a sword and board wielder with light armor. You could have heavy armor, you could have medium armor, and it affects you know not only the stats, the armor rating, and the bonuses, but it also affects your dodge roll or your ability to do that dodge. He was running back. What are we looking for here? It must be inside of the ship. Thought we had been pretty thorough, but I guess not. Let's go back in. Alright, and with that, we are headed back to Captain Douglas. I like that when we get hit, there's that stagger that happens. It really incentivizes you to get better at either blocking or rolling out of the way.
Should go ahead and use the auto run. I don't know if there is a sprint. We haven't been told about sprint if there is one. I'd say. The Monarch's Bluff settlement keeps all this. It's a kind of memorial, I guess. I know you're probably wanting to head up to the settlement yourself soon. I promise. I won't keep you too much longer. It is nice to have company, though. I can't leave until I'm sure that any corruption down here has been dealt with. You can probably tell I don't actually savor this kind of thing. I was wondering... Maybe you could help me out? I know the corruption that remains is coming from the sea cave. Turtle spit, we call it. If you could go in there and just deal with it, it would make my day. But do be careful. Alright, go into a cave and deal with some corruption. Sounds good. Corruption resistance there, tracking at the bottom, so some kind of resistance we have that might wear, wear down over time. Whirling Blade causes 5% Ren for 10 seconds. Or maybe we could take another active. Do we want to grab Shield Rush? Let's grab Shield Rush just to have another active ability to use. Oh, hi there. Defeat the Corrupted Chaplain. I don't know, do we look around fully in this other area? We don't have any kind of cave map. Just want to make sure that we are not leaving anything behind in here. Eat a little bit of food and get that regen going. Kind of feel like can we can we climb up that? No, I guess not. There is a supply stockpile back here.
weapon chest. That's new. A great axe and a life staff. Alright, here's the corrupted chaplain. Let's get a couple hits in. Alright, easy as that. Definitely was some loot on the ground there, dropped in a little bag. I wasn't expecting to find loot that way. We'll have to keep our eyes open for that. Let's take a look if it's something we can equip. Okay. Oh, nice. And see, now our dodge is no longer the roll, but it's this little sidestep because we've equipped some heavy armor. So yeah, when we're standing in areas like this, you can see we're being affected by corruption and our corruption resistance is dropping. So we probably don't want to let that hit zero. Just going to go ahead and take a wild guess. in turtle spit oh saints be praised that's a relief seriously if we left some source of corruption down here it would spread all over monarch's bluffs in a matter of days wherever you came from they must be pretty tough there i mean you're hardly here an hour and you're already cleansing corruption that's pretty impressive i'd say where does the corruption come from oh gosh i'm not the person to ask some people think they have the answer, or so they say. Maybe the dark part of a person's soul, or maybe some evil disease that takes over the mind. I just know it's not pretty. The thing is, even with the source of corruption gone, this is still a really bad sign. One of us needs to take word back to the Monarch's Bluff settlement. We need to warn them. I prefer we go back together, but... It's my duty to stay. You go. Take this message to Constable Seville. You've been worried about corruption surging like this for a long time. Alright, that's going to take us to the main hub, I think, in this area. And like I said, I think we had a chance to start in any of these four zones, so we'll probably have to circle back and grab side quests or just other quests in other zones. But let's go ahead and we'll head up to the hamlet now and see what's going on there. Wondering if we can chop some of these little trees down now. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, we can chop down the young trees. It still takes quite a while to uh, successfully do this. I wonder what the yield is going to be from this. We're committed now. Alright, 24 wood, and we got a boost to our logging skill. 24, that's, uh, I can't, I don't really know if that's good or not, 
At least it's more than a couple for the time that it took us. These areas do seem rather large, that's pretty exciting. Let's go over here and let's check out what's going on over at this campfire. Uh, a contract. This letter is faded with age. I examined the contract Isabella had signed and found the imprint of their seal to be rather unusual. As expected, it was embedded in red wax, but I felt that the symbol almost expressed the color of crimson in its strange geometry. I could not make sense of it, yet could not tear my eyes away. Isabella, noticing my gaze, said that she had seen the symbol, drawn with who knows what, inscribed on the walls of the heretic cell, also in red, but not in wax. Azoth is not the Isle's true wealth. Vitae Eternum's wealth lies much deeper than a vial of blue fire. Even if it rises from the ground in such quantities, it is akin to a field ready to be harvested. Okay. Frederico's Letters, page 7. I hope that means that we haven't, like, overlooked six other pages so far. That would be unfortunate. Monarch Bluff's Legacy, page 1. I know what she's hiding. Lakina. I left town at twilight to avoid a scene with Constable Seville, but she was there, waiting at the gate, like she knew my thoughts. Such a shame to see you go, she said. Monarch's Bluff will surely miss you. A perfectly normal thing to say. For the hundredth time, I wondered if the things I saw Seville do that night were just a nightmare. I can hear your voice, telling me I'm being too paranoid. I find myself watching her. She seems so normal, wrapped up in the petty concerns of the settlement. But sometimes, I catch a flash of it in her eyes when she looks at me. Maybe it's always been there, or maybe she sees me as a threat now. I'm coming to Windsward. If I head straight east all night, I should be able to get there by daybreak. The terrors of the nighttime wilds are nothing compared to what I'm leaving behind. I'm looking forward to a fresh start. Christopher. So yeah, it's going to be really important to investigate any little signs of civilization, apparently, to get all the lore bits. I think that's really cool, and so far those little lore tidbits have been pretty well written. I've really enjoyed the voice acting, I've really enjoyed the lore so far. Uh, very, very nice. The environments are obviously beautiful. Sometimes it's hard to appreciate that when there's a ton of other players around, and you know, you get just the normal latency that you get when everyone's crowded into the same area. Camping. Camping not unlocked yet. Okay. So these must be people's individual campsites that they've set up. Like, player campsites. Yeah, it's gotta be what we have going on here. What is happening over here? Ouch. We have some information about property tax, trading tax, crafting fees. Apparently all kinds of stuff going on here. We've got a tier 2 forge. Stone cutting table. A legendary weapon. I held the eternal blade in my hands. I could not identify the metal. It was lighter than steel and glittered like polished silver. I would swear it hummed. 
The High King bid me strike an old anvil with the edge I dared not until he commanded it. Gripping it firmly, I smote the anvil and sheared away its heel in one stroke. The eternal blade bore no mark. Its edge remained keen as a razor. By God, I will never see its equal. Got four points to spend here. Should probably do that. With every new face, I wonder, will those eyes soon glow red with corruption? That stone, then shattered mountain erupting. I think the moment we dreaded has come. Let me see. Yes. Charity reports the corruption nearly got a foothold on the beach. You must be the one she mentions here. Very well. You're welcome to Monarch's Bluffs. The irony in this corruption business is that an old madman warned us about it years ago. Oh, he was right. It will get worse before it gets better. If it gets better at all, that is. What happened to the madman? Oh, he wandered off. Disappointed and angry. Well on his way to becoming lost, I suspect. I heard rumors of a creepy old man fishing by the Western River. Could be the same one. Who knows? <sighs> You think the corruption will come here? Most likely. The time has come for us to batten down the hatches and seal the settlement off. Take Charity's report to Magistrate Bixford. He and I have discussed this possibility. He knows what must be done. Alright, we will do that, but we are going to take a little bit of a break here, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really interested in your thoughts. I am enjoying myself so far. Obviously, it's hard to say with only about an hour under my belt, but I'm enjoying the combat. I'm enjoying the world and the lore and the story that they're telling, so it seems like a really good time. Let me know what you think, and as always, I appreciate you being here with me today. Thank you so much for the support. If you're interested in New World, you want to see more content, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. I would really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we will see you back in the world of Eternum sometime soon. Bye now.